Hey guys, it's Savannah and welcome back to my channel. Today is Tuesday, August 20th, 2024, and we are back for another podcast episode. Now, I'm sorry in advance if my voice sounds hoarse or scratchy. I am currently in the middle of a sinus infection, but I really wanted to give y'all this update, so I'm still recording for y'all. I cannot believe it is almost September, you guys. This month has been flying by so fast in the middle of just working and trying to start wedding planning and figuring things out for the wedding, but we are getting things rolling a little bit. Um, we will have our engagement photos taken uh, next month, which means we will be able to send out some of the dates soon after. We have the date set, the ceremony location set, we have our wedding party set. So we are just doing it step by step. If you guys have any suggestions at all for wedding stuff in general, I would love to hear it because I am just basically going off of Pinterest inspiration photos and those are not always the most helpful. But I am very excited because it is it's just the start of the rest of my life and I cannot wait for that. Um, also September brings the start of football season which Cole is very excited about because he is a big Auburn fan. So we will be going to uh, the Auburn, I think Oklahoma game on September 7th. So he's very excited about that because it is a new season for the SEC in more than one way. Because it is no longer what the SEC used to be. Um, a lot of the Western, I think it was the Big Ten Conference, um, joined the SEC this year. So apparently it is a very big deal and I don't understand all of it. <laughs> so, um, I will probably be taking something to work on during the game. I'm not entirely positive what it will be. I might because a lot of my projects are big and will not fit into the clear bag because of the clear bag policy. So it'll be something I'm starting. Um, honestly, I'm thinking about taking some fingering weight yarn and a Tunisian hook and working on figuring out that, um, that pattern that I had the idea of when I was working on his lanyard. Um, not to say I just crochet for all of the football football game. Um, I do pay attention. I do yell when they are being stupid and I get very caught up in the excitement of it all. It's just forever when they have um, the timeouts and the little breaks in between plays and turnovers and halftime. Although I do pay attention to the halftime show because I was in marching band in high school and that is my jam. And it is something else entirely to watch a college uh, marching band because it is so different from the artistic perfection that we had to do in high school for our competitions. But it's just so interesting how they do it. Although neither of us are big fans of Ohio State, but I am a fan of their marching band because it is such a great marching band. But Auburn's marching band was really good last year, so I'm very excited to see them again, especially since we'll be on the side of the stadium that the marching band faces this time, so I'll actually be able to see it from the front instead of the back. Um, I don't really have any finished objects this time, but I do have a new tutorial on my channel for my Impatience Granny Square. I managed to record and release it on uh, Granny Square Day, which I did not even realize it was Granny Square Day until 
after I recorded it and set it to, re to upload. So that was a happy coincidence. But I will link this pat this tutorial in the cards up here. Um, but anyway, that's all I have for that. Let's get on to some whips. All right, first things first. An update on my holiday candy shawl. She is getting big. I have finished through color 13 and I have color 14 wound and ready to go. Um, yeah, it is definitely a good size so far. I have 11 more colors to add and it is going to be very pretty once it's done. Um, I One thing that I absolutely love about uh, mini skein patterns is just the absolute inherent chaos that can come with all of the colors. I know some um, advent boxes and stuff like that are designed to be coordinating in fades, but when you just have a whole bunch of minis and you just choose which ones, the chaos of it is just absolutely incredible. I mean, look at this pink purple color next to the burnt orange and the cream and then that sea green and yellow, pale yellow and then the mauve wine purple color in that golden brown and I could keep going on all of these colors but I absolutely adore it and then one thing that this pattern I absolutely love about it which I keep saying but I designed the pattern but it was such an amazing idea on my part is these pops of texture from the post stitches compared to just the regular stitches. It is absolutely incredible. It feels so good if you are a texture person. And then is it just makes the fabric just so incredible to look at. Like, I could go on all day about this pattern, but I absolutely love it. And I cannot wait to get this part, well, this pattern completed, edited, and put out for you guys. But, um, measurements right now are across this top line. It is about 33 and a half inches. And then the depth of it is about 28 and a quarter inches so she's getting pretty big and I cannot wait to see how big it ends up being it's going to be so cozy to wrap up in but anyway that's all I have to talk about for the shawl right now so let's get on to the next one so I was digging through my project bags the other night and I found this old whip from like last year, probably early in the year, and it's a baby blanket design that I've been working on. So I have been using a couple of different Hobby Lobby yarns for this. Um, baby Bee Sweet Delight is the one that has the tag still. The other one I think is some Yarn Bee Merino blend, but when I pulled this out of the bag, I realized that I did not have a crochet hook with it, um, but thankfully I remembered what size I was using, so I was able to find more than likely a different one than what I had been using, but a 4mm crochet hook, so I've been able to work on this a little bit more. But um, this pattern 
mainly uses extended single crochets and double crochets and then the color transitions um, use a spike stitch so there's not much to talk about on this one because I haven't done much on it but yeah I have pulled out another whip from the depths of my bags so that's just another one to add to the rotation next up is my fingering weight scrappy blanket I am very excited about this because I have made it to round 67, which is the last round I have written on my pattern so far. Um, round 67 is where my DK weight one left off, so this is where this one has stopped for now. I might work more on it, adding more rows on the pattern if my fingering weight one because I only have a little bit of DK scraps left right now, but I'm going to have plenty of fingering weight ones once I'm done with my shawl. Um, and the fingering weight scraps go a lot farther than the DK weight one. But what's really exciting about round 67 is it is the first round of the repeats that, that uses uh, the crossed double crochets. And I just love how they look on this. I'm trying to get it to where it is not blurry, but it is not working, you guys. There we go, that's a little bit better. But, um, yeah, I'm very excited about how far in this is. Um, so measurements real quick, the sides are about 8 inches across and then completely across the blanket is about 20 and a quarter inches. So she's getting big, but still a far sight smaller compared to my DK weight one. And they are at the exact same place in the pattern right now. Um, but I really hope at some point in the next few years I get one of these blankets finished so that I can finish up the pattern and publish it for you guys because I mean who else want, who, who doesn't want another scrappy project to work on so that's all for that one this is just a quick update on the replica of the doctor's scarf for my dad. I have not done too much more, but I did finish this giant green section, and now I'm on to a mustard yellow section. Thankfully, this section is a lot smaller than the green one that I just finished, but yeah, I still have probably five more feet of this to go, so I will keep you guys posted on how this goes. Hi, Ivy. She is being lazy and not saying hi to y'all, but um, yeah, that's pretty much all I've got for the scarf. My last update comes in this giant, giant tote bag. The front of it is um, one donation can save three lives. Uh, I got this last week after I donated blood at Blood Assurance. Quick PSA, if you guys are able and willing, please donate blood. There is always a blood shortage. I personally have been donating this last year uh, and I really think it is something that, if we are all able to, is really something really easy to do to help others. Um, if you are unaware, uh, O negative can donate to any blood type, O positive, which I am, 
can donate to all positive blood types, but can only receive O blood. Um, so if you are either of those blood types, those are really always in need. But PSA is over. But this bag contains all of my solid spike stitch granny squares from my Disney attraction club from last year. I was very glad I got this tote bag because I needed something to put all of them in <laughs> and it is perfect. But I have managed to finish and block redoing those first three squares from last year. They are now the same size as everything else and they have borders on them. I have been able to start on bordering the squares and soon I will be able to join them. But um, the squares without the border are about 11 and a quarter inch, but with the border they are about 12 and a half inches. But I absolutely love how this border is looking with them so far especially the color. I'm so glad I chose this color because it is the perfect neutral to go with them. Uh, the border is not a Fangirl Fibers color. It is actually from Madeline Tosh um, in antique lace color. But I absolutely love it. I have been doing a linen stitch for three rows of the border, and then the fourth row is just single crochet. But I am loving how it is looking. Um, when I join them, I will be joining them with the single crochet method, uh, because I just think that is what looks really good. Um, it makes it look very seamless to me. Um, so that's why I was choosing to use a linen stitch and then single crochet border because I mean it'll look very very seamless to me I keep using the word seamless it's not seamless when they're being seamed um, but yeah um, I'm trying to uh, do the borders on them in the order of the months, which means I'm having to go back and look at my old podcast. But right now I am on the Matterhorn, which is the um, April color. So this is just what round two of it looks like. So it's, it's getting there slowly but surely. Uh, so I have about nine and a half more to go before I can join them together but I'm very excited to show y'all what it ends up looking like but anyway let's get on to the uh, stash enhancement my camera died so I'm on my phone now but last week I got some squishy mail which means I got the fangirl fibers Disney Attraction Club for July and this is Spaceship Earth isn't she just gorgeous? Like, this is the most perfect gray. Like, seriously, they match perfectly, you guys. I absolutely love this. And I am so excited that I'm almost done with last year's blanket because then I can get started on this year's. And I am still pretty set on doing a corner to corner with it. Um, because I've never done a corner to corner and I just think it'll show off these colors perfectly. But anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. I think it ended up a bit longer than I expected it to. But anyway, you guys, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments down below. Give this video a like, hit subscribe if you haven't, and as always, until next time, happy crocheting!